And now, making their way into the arena, hailing from the great pro wrestling state of Massachusetts, they are the hosts of the Top of the Cage podcast. Here are Bill and Juice. Match types. Within the world of pro wrestling, there are so many different stipulations that you can see on any given week of TV or pay-per-view. And Juice, you know us, you know what we like to do. So on this YouTube video, we are going to be doing a Mount Rushmore of match type stipulations, except the Royal Rumble. Now, you were the one that put the limitation on the Royal Rumble, so I'm curious why. Because I feel like that's easy. I feel like if you ask type a match of like Mount Rushmore to anyone, the first match that comes to mind for everyone, like I know everyone has their own taste and it's like, oh, there's nothing that's true for everyone. I'm like, nah, I feel like that's true for everyone. I think Royal Rumbles and everyone's Mount Rushmore or almost everyone like, and it's definitely on both of ours. Come on. Mm -hmm. Can you, can you tell me and say it wouldn't be? No, but that's that's my number one. Royal Rumble is my favorite match of the year. It literally, I am excited for the end of the year, beginning of the year, specifically for the Royal Rumble every year. Me too. And I always like to watch it with the boys, get like a big event going. It's it's the Royal, you know, it's even bigger than WrestleMania in my eyes. Yeah, and we degenerate gamble on it. So yeah. <laughs> All right. So I'll kick us off here with a match type that I think might be on both of ours. And it's one that like immediately comes to mind as something that I think is both a good storytelling device and like the quality of matches we've seen of these in history, I think really sets it apart. And that is a last man standing match. For me, I think that that's a match type that ends feuds. You get two brutal warriors going in and only one can reign supreme technically I mean, technically we've seen two reign supreme but i also like how wrestlers can be tricky you know like a heel can get over on a face by handcuffing them by taping their feet together so they can't stand up you know different little nuances like that i think are what make a last man standing match great and i feel like there's so many in history that i could say are like top 10 matches for me of all time that's uh, honorable mention for me i actually didn't put it on um I kind of wanted to think of just, I'm I mean, usually for Mount Rushmore's, I try to think of not what, like my personal bias, but like just unbiased, like what's the best in multiple different categories. But for this, I really thought of what Mount Rushmore really for me personally. And I know you kind of did the same too. Uh, my first match is Money in the Bank ladder my, match. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be honest here. All four of my matches are multi man matches. Um, I love chaos, man. I love it. Uh, I mean, I love a good storytelling device in Last Man Standing. I know I always talk like I'm storytelling characters overall, but in terms of match stipulations and types, I just love chaotic matches where you can throw multiple storylines in one match and also just pure mayhem and unpredictability and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I go with the Money Bank Ladder match, which I feel like... Um, is an easy one, but and it's a huge storytelling device. Like that's a big thing to win, kind of like the Royal Rumble. Like you're kind of guaranteed if you win that, you're kind of guaranteed you're gonna win a title. Almost. I mean, I I, I said almost guaranteed because let's it's like eighty nine percent of the time. I percent. I wonder what this percentage is, but like, I mean, I think there's only four in history, right? I think it's that Cena, failed. Cena, Corbin, Sandow, and in theory, no Braun. Remember, like, Braun just, like, decided not to use his. He, like, threw it. Or Brock Lesnar threw it or something. Like, he just Oh, yeah. It. Yeah. <laughs> Braun, too. Yeah. Braun is five. There it is. There's five. Five out of who knows how many. Now, the Money in the Bank did not make my list. But, again, that is an honorable mention for me. Actually, I don't have any multi-man matches. Technically, I have some that can be multi-man matches. But, in my eyes, a lot of these are single one-on-one -on -one matches. But... Yeah, the Money in the Bank, I agree with you. In terms of historic matches, I think ladder matches in general could probably be like kind of generalized into this category. I didn't really go with generalized matches like that either, but I could see Money in the Bank. It was definitely one I know before we were talking that I was having trouble picking my fourth. That was one that was rattling around, but I feel like for me, Money in the Bank is super important. It's more of a spectacle than it is anything else. And it also gets looped into ladder matches for me. And I do not have ladder matches on my list either. So 
But what I do have on my list is a type of ladder match, technically. And that is the good old TLC tables, ladders, and chairs. And of course, the main reason why I have this on is because of the Dudley Boys, Edge and Christian, and Hardy Boys trilogy of them. If you ever watch any of those matches and don't get anything emotionally out of them, anything entertainment wise out of them, you need to watch it again and then watch it again and watch it again. Because as a kid, that's one of the main reasons why I've loved the Hardy Boys. I like Edge, I like Christian, and the Dudley Boys too. All six of those guys went out and innovated this match type. And then we saw it innovated further and further. I mean, I think of examples like Edge and John Cena, where Cena FU'd Edge off the ladder through two tables. Like that's an iconic moment for me from my childhood. Like Cena persevering over Edge. Edge was tormenting him. Edge was just bullying the crap out of Cena, something that you hadn't really seen to Cena up until that point. And again, it's a way to finish a feud. It's a great way to get a hard fought win for a baby face, especially, but also a great way for heels to be dastardly and get a win too. Yeah. And it's, a, it's almost impossible match. It's really, I, I can't think of like a bat. Well, one that I disliked. I mean, even the recent ones, like um, it was like drew McIntyre Miz. I know Miz like wasn't really in it, but it was like tried to cash in and um, who was the champ. Oh, Randy Orton. Was it Randy Orton? I have no idea, to be honest. Oh, no, no. Drew McIntyre was the champ. AJ Styles was the challenger. And then Miz just, like, tried to cash in. And Morrison, but Morrison did it. So they, like, gave it back to him after the match. That one. And then KO and Roman Reigns the same night. And they were they were both great. They were awesome matches. Um, Mine, I'm going to, I'm going across the pond. I'm going away from WWE. I'm going to a match that we only see in... One promotion, TNA slash Impact, the Ultimate X match. Um, this is one of the hardest matches for performers to do. You have to have so much body strength, and just it's full of just iconic moments. Um, it and it's just it's launched the careers and really gave huge highlights to so many great guys like Low Key, AJ Styles, um, Daniels, just so many. Like it's iconic match still use we had the first woman one just last year that really banged um it's just a fun really creative interesting match and tna just is really great at thinking of really creative interesting ideas i almost said like really good because there's some bad like the reverse battle royale but this is not one of those bad ones. this is a great one gosh alexander is still afraid of the reverse battle royale by the way um, yeah, actually, I think that's a really great one, actually. Like, I didn't put that on my list. However, I was never a TNA Impact person, and I still really am not that much to this day. But I have gone back and watched some of their, like, greatest hits and definitely have seen a fair share of a couple exhibition matches. And, yeah, like, they are innovative. They're made to put those guys that are high flyers, guys that can just, you know, do things that you never thought humanly possible in a wrestling ring. And, yeah, I, I think that's actually a great call out. One that I didn't even come across my mind, but now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, you know, that is pretty innovative. Again, good way to tell a story, good way to get a guy over. Now for me, I'm going to keep it in the realm of, of ropes and things and things being attached because I actually am choosing a, an off the cuff one here, Juice. I don't think this is something that I don't know if you personally thought of this, but for me, again, storytelling and historic wise strap matches are some of the ways we've seen absolutely brutal feuds get even more violent two guys brown leather strap both the guys wrists there is no escaping each other you are tied you get beat down and they can take that strap and whip you with it and i'm just thinking like all the examples historically and thinking of all of the examples we've seen in wwe I mean, WCW, all the old school wrestling. That that was the stipulation match back in old school wrestling too. And I, those guys did not hold back on each other. And I, I think even now we've seen it a little bit more recently where guys just don't hold back at strap matches. And I fucking love the spot when the baby face finally gets the heel on his knees and he's just whipping away at his back. That to me, again, great way to continue or finish a feud. And they're always brutal matches. I'll be honest, not a big fan of strap matches. I feel like the spots get kind of repetitive in every one. 
Um, which is weird. I say that because I really like dog collar matches, which are like the same thing. <laughs> but um, I don't know. I just feel like dog collar matches are always bloodier and like. I don't know. I like the dog walking spots more than the whip with those strap spots, which are like, it's, you know, it's, I know it's kind of just nitpicky, but never been a big strap match guy. And a lot of them, I can't really think of like recent ones and just past big ones. They just never really connect with me, even the most well-known ones. Um, so that it definitely wasn't even in like a honorable mention for me. Um, but you know, to each his own. And like I said, like, what's really the difference between that and a dog collar match? It's just me being a little dickhead. <laughs> uh, well, next for me. That's your rebuttal for the money in the bank, just being a ladder match comment then. Yeah. Oh, well, it's, it's being specific. Being specific, it's the certain prize that makes it different. But um, my match, I'm going to say, I'm going, I'm going TNA again. I'm going to a recent match. Um, not too old. Call your shot gauntlet. This is a battle royal, but at the end, once there's two guys in, it turns into a normal match where you run my pinball pinfall or submission. And also what I love about it is it is intergender. Call your shot always has both the woman and the knockouts and the men's division of TNA slash impact or impact uh, in it. It's always a blast. It, uh, and they, do even better job than the Royal Rumble of bringing back people. There's always legends or always former guys that aren't on the roster. There's always a couple surprises like this year, um, even though I hated that he won the Dudley uh, Bubba. Well, well, Bully Ray. Bully Ray is his impact name. He won it. That was very surprising. It's full of surprising wins and it's kind and the winner uses that trophy as like a cash in and we've seen it cashed in. They can use it in a cash in. They can use it to just get a formal match. They can, we've seen it used to get the tag titles that uh, we've seen to use it, to get the uh, world title, mainly the world title. I don't think I can't think of a call your shot to get a mid card, like the X division, but um, yeah, it's, I don't know. It's just a blast. And it was kind of me trying to find a solution of the no Royal Rumble. <laughs> I was going to say, you're the one that put the stipulation of no Royal Rumble, and then you choose the Impact Royal Rumble, essentially. So Yeah, but I feel like it's not on everyone's list. Like People kind of forget about it because Impact is always that forgotten promotion. Yep, again, I will say I did not even cross my mind and not consider it, but you're right. That is a really interesting match. I love the concept of the final two is a one-on-one match because at the end of the day, it's pro wrestling. It's pinfall submission. That's how you finish a match, not throwing people over the top rope. It ain't back in the, what was it like the sixties, seventies where you couldn't throw people over the mat over the top rope or you get disqualified. Wasn't that like the old school stipulation? Yeah, it was like the old school rules and like, you know, there's still like sometimes we see wrestlers try to like use that. Well, the pure rules type of way. Well, the last match I'm pitching does not have pure rules. In fact, there is very little rules in this match that I am about to pick for my fourth. And I think if you know me and you know what I like in wrestling, this one will be no surprise. I chose the hell in a cell. I remember when I was a kid for Christmas, because this is around the Christmas season when we're recording this, I got a Hell in the Cell DVD. That was back in like probably 2010. And it had, you know, Shawn Michaels versus The Undertaker, Triple H, uh, like every Triple H one. We had the Batista Undertaker one. We had Undertaker and I don't know if the Undertaker Edge one. I think the Undertaker Edge one was like the newest one on there at that time. But I love a Hell in a Cell match. I think that, again, brutal, no escape. And the thing about it is I like a Hell in a Cell more than a steel cage because it gives you the opportunity to go to the outside. You're not, like, limited by it. But also, you know, you can casually climb to the top of it. Like, it was my favorite stipulation match in WWE video games when I was a kid. You know, being able to just go up there, because I was always the Undertaker, you know, so like whoever it was, whoever, whoever Undertaker was feuding with at the time, you know, whether it was like CM Punk or Edge or Batista, just, you know, you go up there, they always come up there with you, you do a back body drop like Undertaker did to mankind, goes through the ring, or you just fucking throw them off, go through the announce table. 
But that is easily the most iconic spot in wrestling history to me is Undertaker throwing Mankind off the hell in a cell. And it would be criminal for me not to say that that's on the Mount Rushmore for me. That's a good one. I love, I knew that one of my matches would have to be some type of match where there's a cage. Either Hell in the Cell, which that one is honorable mention, very close, almost made in so many iconic Hell in the Cell matches. If I'm talking about the match type that has probably some of my most favorite consistent, like consistently puts on bangers, it's that one. Um, I thought of Six Sides of Hell, which we saw in American America's Most Wanted vs. Triple X, another, another um, NWA. I thought about that because those two matches they had in 2003 and 2004 are two of my favorite. Those are my two favorite tag matches, hands down, all the time. And they did just the craziest spot that people remember, but that's not the one, the, you know, the poison rana, the guy walking on the cage and then doing the poison rana. It was fucking sick. And people that don't even know that's from that match have a lot of people have still seen that spot because it's a very popular clip. But um, that's not the match I talked about. I picked, so I'm gonna stop talking about it. I picked uh, Elimination Chamber. It's mainly because of one match, because of 2002 the Survivor Series. But uh, like I said, I love my multi man matches, and I always just am just enthralled into Elimination Chamber matches. Doesn't doesn't matter if it's good or bad one. I'm always interested. I always rate them high, very highly. Like. If I'm giving a rating, even if they're not a good one, like I'll, I'll go online and people are like, oh, I don't like that. That wasn't a very good elimination chamber match. And usually I disagree. I mean, with the exception of the Shayna Baszler one where she just destroyed everyone, that one sucked. And I didn't really like the Brock Lesnar one recently either. Um, but most of the time I enjoy them. They're just chaotic. There's a lot going on. They can be good storytelling devices. Um, and there's just so many great moments. And I just love people getting thrown in the cage walls. I love doing it in video games. <laughs> I love just watching people do it. And on my TV, it's, yeah, I needed a K- type of cage match in mind. So I chose the Elimination Chamber. And I love people going through the pods. Yeah, actually, the Elimination Chamber is a great pick. I It didn't even cross my mind. And I'm pretty sad that it didn't because... Yeah, like that is up there for me. That's for sure my number one honorable mention. And like you said, great way to tell a story. Like when Bray Wyatt won the Elimination Chamber, I thought that was the best way to put it on him. And I still am am a believer that the Elimination Chamber match should be Bray Wyatt's match. Just saying. I agree with that. All right, Juice. Well, do you got any honorable mentions for us here tonight? I know you said you had a few. So I don't know if you got any. Yeah, I already said uh, Six Sides of Hell, uh, Hell in a Cell. We are really went across three three stages of hell or two or three falls, but really specifically three stages of hell. I like each fall having a different stipulation. Uh, that's one I really wanted to put on because I was like, oh, should I really have all multi man matches? And that was the the one the one that came that is just one on one that I was gonna put on, but I decided now nah, I'm going all multi man. Um, that one's probably my number five. Um. Yeah, I mean, there's so many I could say, but I'm just going to leave it there with those ones. Yeah, I'll throw in uh, War Games. I think War Games is a great concept for a match. I like an Iron Man match because of how historic the Iron Man match is. I mean, we've seen like the Brett versus Sean one. Like, it's probably one of the greatest matches that's ever existed. So I am always a huge fan of an Iron Man match. I also like a good old fashioned tables match. I'll be honest. Um, we will uh, in the upcoming weeks, you will see something coming down with another Mount Rushmore involving tables. That's a little uh, hint spoiler, maybe, if you will. But yeah, I, I think you said it best. Juice. There's so much wrestling out there for everybody. So many different match types that we're probably not even thinking of like one where we're both going to be like, oh, so that is your responsibility as the viewer in the comments to let us know your Mount Rushmore for match type stipulations, or you can also let us know on social media and juice. Where can the people do that? Uh, you go to the Twitter, you type capital T capital O capital T capital C underscore capital P lowercase O lowercase D. Um, and you can go to the Instagram and you go T O T C underscore P O D. 
Yes, and all those are linked in the description below as well. And we want to thank you all so much for tuning in to this episode of Top of the Cage. Please make sure you are like, sharing, and subscribing, and we will catch you next time.